welcome to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm Gemma Gofton with another edition of the programme that aims to make your next cruise or holiday as problem-free and relaxing as possible. So if you have a holiday, cruise or travel-related question, here's how to get in touch. To leave a question on our viewer hotline, call 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. Write on our Facebook wall or tweet us, just search Holiday and Cruise Channel. Send a message through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk forward slash clinic. Or write to us at the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Now in today's programme, we're looking at river cruises, sailing with Europe's largest river cruise line. Since 1976, Quasi Europe has pioneered river cruising on the most beautiful waterways in Europe. Visiting a choice of dazzling riverside cities in France, Italy, Spain, Germany and Belgium. To the romantic Rhine Valley, the Rhone and the Seine, the Seine, beautiful Blue Danube, the Douro Valley, Venice and more. And here to tell us more is Michel Grimm. Thank you so much for joining us. We've really headed up an interesting chat here. But first of all, tell me about the river cruise market and you've been in it for some time. How did you get yes. involved? Yes, bonjour, Gemma. Bonjour. Uh, first, thank you for uh, welcoming us here on the, on the channel. Um, actually, I'm in the tourist business for a couple of years and I joined the company 15 years ago. Uh, as you said, the company existed for almost now 40 years as we have our 40th anniversary next year. And I've been recruited to develop the international markets on the, for the company. And how important is it in the UK market, river cruising? The UK market is quite important for the, the river cruise market. Um, on the world aspect, uh, USA is the first market, then come Germany, and uh, the third markets are France and UK, about at the same level. So UK is uh, representing about 140,000 passengers uh, and uh, continuing growth every year. I was going to say, I'm assuming it's a growing market because it's we a, hear more and more about river cruising. Now. Yes, it's a growing market on all countries, but also especially in the UK. Um, and there are different types of river cruises, aren't they? Um, so let's, let's break them down, tell us about them, so people might think, ooh, that's the one for me, that's the type yeah. I'd like. Yeah. The, um, the way the people would choose a, a river cruise first is the destination. That's the first criteria they will, they will select to, to choose which river they want to, to cruise on. And of course, after it depends on date, uh, prices certainly, but the, the first criteria will be the, the destination. Um, river cruise is about culture first. So when you decide, when you wish to discover Paris, then you would choose a cruise on the Seine. You wish to discover Bordeaux, you choose a, a cruise on the Dordogne or the Garonne. That's how they proceed. And do you find that when people river cruise, they continue to river cruise? That's yeah. their choice then? That's true. In, in, in general, uh, the um, rate of repeaters is very high. It's really very high. We have uh, some cruise, cruise passengers who booked three, four cruises a year and they, they repeat year and year. And the, the very good thing about this is that they bring their friends together. So, and I guess, nice. I guess for us in the, the UK as well, it's quite accessible, isn't it? If we're just heading to Europe, it's not yeah. such a big upheaval that we're thinking about packing for three weeks and going to lots of exotic places. We're heading to Europe, we're quite familiar with it. Yeah, it's very simple to, to do river cruise from, from the UK, especially in Europe. Uh, many operators come by air, train or coach, or you, you may even come by car and park near, uh, near the, the, the cruise departure. Um, as all river crews start from big cities in, in Europe, it could be Bordeaux, Paris, it could be Sevilla, it could be Venice, it could be Budapest, Prague. It's always possible to, to, to join the place easily from any places in Europe and to, to embark. Um, now we have some viewer questions, which is yes. very always very exciting to us. This is Gwyn and George from Stokes. Thank you very much for your question. Now they want to know how is river cruising different from an ocean cruise? Um, if I would make a, a joke, I like jokes. Uh, I would say <laughs> keep it clean. If you get seasick on board a river cruise ships, it's because you spend too much time at the bar. 
There are no waves. <laughs> no seasick, never. No, that's a joke. But the main difference, as I said before, is River Cruise is focused on the countries and region that you are going to cross. Uh, you will dis it's all about culture, big cities that you will discover. Why? Because if you look at history, all the, the countries have grown uh, with the people moving by boat on the rivers. That was the main way to, to travel and to transport people and, and stuff on, on through, through the countries. So all the big cities, the big place of culture we have in Europe, at least most of them, are situated along rivers. And um, so the, the big point about River Cruise is the interest you have for culture and to discover history. On board Ocean Cruise, even if this is not what we sell uh, in priority, the, the, the fun you will have on board the ship, activities on board the ship are probably as far as, imp as, as important as the excursion that you may do. Um now, I know nothing about river cruising, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. I'm thinking also maybe you've always got a view if you're on a river cruise. Of course. Um, and not just of the deep blue sea, because yeah. you've got things either side. Exactly. Um, and at smaller vessels, so perhaps a little bit more intimate as well? The, the size of the vessel is, of course, much smaller. Uh, in average, a river cruise ship carry about 100 to 160 passengers depending on, on, on the ship, compared to the ocean cruiser where you, you have thousands of passengers. So also on, on board the river cruise ship, you, it's much more intimate. By the end of the day, you know everyone on board, you make friends, uh, and this is also why we have a lot of repeaters, because the atmosphere on board is very uh, relaxing and comfortable. I guess people make a lot of friends as well. So while we're chatting about the type of person, what type of person would book a river cruise? Who does it suit? It suits everybody. But we have to say that river cruise is first about destination, culture, and we have probably much more uh, adults and um, senior people because they have a lot of time uh, to get uh, on board and to have interest for this destination. So it's first uh, a product where people will want to discover the destinations. Um, now another viewer question, this is uh, Susie Robinson from Essex, so thank you for this Susie, keep watching, we do enjoy people sending in these questions. What, um, what can the guests expect on a river cruise? So about facilities and amenities, um, okay. entertainment, what will they have? Um, a river cruise ship is a floating hotel, so you can expect exactly the same thing as you have in a hotel, which means you have your floating hotel with cabins, air conditioning, a private bathroom, uh, the restaurant on board, uh, the lounge, the bar, a second lounge sometimes, a sand deck where you can relax. Uh, of course, we have Wi-Fi on board, we have uh, all drinks, meals included. So it's a very comfortable way to travel. And on top of this, when you travel on your floating hotel, you unpack once and you're quiet for the rest of the trip. You don't have to unpack and pack every day. Um, and if we talk about entertainment, because if you've had a full day of it, you've been out and about, you've explored wherever, Paris, I don't know, um, what, what can you expect when you get back? Oh, you might be exhausted, people might just want to sit in a corner, but can yes, we be entertained yeah, as well? That's right. Yeah, of course. Uh, as, as you said, they are travelling all the day to discover the places, so when they come back on board, they like to relax. We have musicians on board, with, in the lounge, with the dance floor, they can have a drink, or with or without alcohol in the lounge, listen to the music, dance in the evening, drink the day after, before the, the meals, we have some, let's say, uh, gentle games, uh, just to entertain a little bit. Or we also have lectures on board about the destination we reach. And everywhere where it's possible, we have uh, folkloric uh, groups playing, like, for example, um, uh, in, uh, in Sevilla, we have a flamenco group coming on board and doing a demonstration, this kind of thing. Um, and the demonstrations, I think, would be very interesting if, you, if you're in a place and you learn about the culture. Exactly. It's always exciting, yeah. isn't it? Um, what about the length of cruises? If you were just, say, having a taste, or you hadn't done it before, can you, is there a three-day or a five-day? 
we, we do offer this kind of duration. Actually, uh, the range, we have the largest offer in terms of duration, from three days to 16 days. But if you come to the first time, for the first time, and you wish just to discover the product, you can, you can reach a three, four, five days cruise program. Uh, it's what, from three, four nights on board, you discover the destination, I am sure you will come back. Absolutely. Right, we're going to have a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to chat about. Now, if you're new to cruising, then this is our first time guide to cruise holidays, and it's well worth asking for. It's absolutely free of charge. Just give us a call 0871 423 Now, calls will cost 10p a minute from the BT landline, and other networks and mobiles may just vary. You can also ask for a copy through our website, www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. And whilst you're asking for this, we'll take a quick break. See you shortly. Welcome back to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. It is lovely to have you with us. In today's programme, we're discussing river cruises and Michelle Grimm is still with me. Now, you mentioned before the break that river cruising is all about the destinations right. and this is the real sell and the appeal yeah. to people. So let's chat about the rivers you can actually sail on. Let's start with some exciting ones that perhaps we might not know about or have sailed on it. Okay, exciting ones. Okay, um, the very classical one would be, of course, the Romantic Rhine, the Blue Danube, the Seine is famous, the Son and Rhone are really famous too. But there are a few other rivers, um, especially for Croisiop, where we, we can bring people. Um, example, the Guadalquivir in Andalusia, from departure from Sevilla. We can also bring passengers on the Tisa River in the deep heart of Hungary, in the Sava in Serbia. Uh, we just opened a new destination, the Loire. Of course, everybody knows about the castles, but now we can river, we can cruise on, on that river too. So there are, there are plenty of destinations where people can come and enjoy the river cruise. Um, now, what about languages on board and currency on board? Because if we're, we're dotting around to different places, might we right. need different currencies? Yeah, but today it's quite, quite simple to, to, to travel through Europe. The two main official languages on board are, of course, French and English. And the currency on board is Euro. Of course, anybody can pay with a credit card. And for the cash, it would be Euro. OK. So, we know where we're visiting, we've decided, yes. um, and then the tough thing is deciding on your excursions, yeah. um, because you don't want to miss out on anything, but then also you don't want to do too much that you're exhausted. So, um, do we need to be organised and go, OK, I'm doing this one, I'm doing this one, or do you just go with the flow when you get there? Actually, we, we, we let the choice open. You can pre-book the excursions or you can book on board. Uh, but you have to know that if you pre-book, it's a bit cheaper for the passenger than if he books on board. And um, I must say, it's also easier for us to organise when people pre-book. But it's possible to do this on board too. And I guess also, if you don't pre-book, if you're not organised, there is a possibility, is there, that you might not get on a certain excursion? Or will you always make room? <laughs> You'll always squeeze us on. You might No, we out. generally have always room. Ah, yeah, OK. Yeah. And what about the guides? Um, because it's all well and good going to look at beautiful castles and things, and you're thinking, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this, and I still don't know anything about it. Is there so always somebody around who can tell you what's yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, our excursions are accompanied by uh, professional guides, so we have all the information about the destination, about castle, museum, or in some places, like the Palais of the Pape in Avignon, we also may use the audio guide, so it depends. But it's, of course, you get all the information to get uh, the point to the culture. Yeah. Um, much earlier on, you mentioned, which I think is the big appeal for me, only unpacking once. Yes. OK. But here's where I start to panic. I don't know what to pack. Is that, you know, when we go, am I going to have to dress up? Do I need casual clothes? Do I need smart clothes for dining? It's always a panic to me. I doubt it's a panic for you. I'm oh. sure you have everything. Yeah. <laughs> but on board, on board river cruises, it's casual. It's casual. You need actually uh, some clothes to, to do the excursions during the day, depending on the destination. If you cruise to Sevilla in Andalusia, it's not the same weather as in Belgium, for example. But so the, 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 the clothes for the, the excursion, casual clothes on board. People enjoy to wear some tie or a nice dress for the gala dinner the last night of the, the cruise, but it's in general casual. 
Okay. Um, and what about, this is the other panic. There are many panics for me going on holiday, I by see. the way, as you can hear. Um, tips. Are you not, do I tip the waiter? Do I tip him? Do I tip her? Do I tip at the end? I'm panicking. In general, on the river cruise business, many cruise operators include tips in the, in the price of the cruise. As we are a French company, we are not allowed by the law to include the tips. So it's something we organize on board. Very simple, there is an envelope in the, uh, in the cabin. At the end of the, the cruise, you give or give not the tip and give, it, give the envelope at the reception desk. It's very ah. simple. Okay. Uh, but you have to know also that as we are a French company, all our crew members are employees of the company under French law. So the tip is really a, a bonus for them. They get a regular salary anyway. Um, now, we're moving on to my favourite subject. Yes. Food. <laughs> well, cocktails is actually my favourite subject, but we'll go on to food. Um, what about the type of food we'll be eating on board? Uh, with River Cruises, is it a sort of a big swanky affair or is it very casual and we'll just sit down and chat with people? The atmosphere is very casual. But when we speak about food, especially with French, it's, it's not just a subject, it's, it's a way of life. <laughs> um, actually, the, the chairman of the company uh, is, is very keen on food. Everybody, in, uh, as it's a family owned company, are very crazy about food, good food. Um, we, had, we have meals inspired by French gastronomy. And depending on the destination where we cruise, of course, there is a little touch of local uh, gastronomy. It could be Italian, could be Spanish, could be Hungarian. Um, so the meal and that we deliver on board are high quality. And we do have partnership, for example, with famous cook chef like Paul Bocuse. So it gives you an idea of the, of the quality. But it is a relaxing time. If you have any special dietary requirements, you shouldn't be put off, I guess, with travelling. You should just sort of no tell problem. people ahead of time. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely no problem. We, we can adapt our, our meals with gluten-free um, diet, with a uh, vegetarian diet. It's easier for us if we have the information before you come on board. But if you tell us when you arrive on board, it's fine. OK. Now, you strike me as somebody who's done a lot of river cruising. So tell us about a typical menu or your favourite menu that you once experienced. I'm a big eater, so all the menu <laughs> are my favourite. But a uh, typical, typical menu would be, for example, to have uh, as an appetizer uh, roulé de saumon with a sauce réfort. It's, uh, it's nicer in French. You lost, yes, no? it's lovely. OK, let's say uh, roulé de saumon sur une sauce réfort et, um, and some, uh, how do they say, uh, marmelade de légumes. And then you can have a tournado, piece of beef, uh, with a lit de legumes and pommes de terre sauté, um, a café gourmand. Or if you like cheese, we also have feuilleté de maroil, very famous uh, uh, smelty cheese, a café gourmand, and for the dessert, um, could be what we call an omelette norvégienne, I think you say, Alaska ice cake or something like that. Ice cake. Oh, okay. We were really testing my GCSE French yeah. then. I got vegetables, I got potatoes, I got beef. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds okay the best to me. Thing, the best thing would be to come on board and enjoy. And oh, yes, well, that, see, now we'll take that as an invitation. Be careful. Okay, let's go on to another question. This is Debbie Hampton from Cumbria. Now, she's just wondering um, if maybe you have a disability, you, you're a wheelchair user. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't. You are catered for. You can be looked after. You can yeah, right. be quite mobile. Um, we have a few cabins equipped for uh, wheelchairs, which means the, the, the door is a bit larger. The, um, uh, the bathroom is also larger and equipped for, for this kind of handicap. And uh, of course, that would be always on the main deck, so people can embark and have access to the restaurant, the lounge, and the cabin on the same deck. There are a few ships with three decks, and then we have the elevator. Fabulous. Um, OK, let's move on now to canal barge cruise experiences. I love canal barges. I must say, I love this too. It's, They're just so pretty. It, it, yes. Uh, it's a new product for us that we started and developed uh, two years ago. And we, still, we are still building new barges. Uh, I mean, the barges are small, only 12 cabins, so 24 passengers. We have six crew members uh, dedicated to the passengers. So we cook, we do everything for them. 
uh, you have the jacuzzi on board, you have uh, bicycles on board, a canal barge cruises about 5 km per hour. You can anytime go on, 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 the, on the side, take the bicycle you, uh, and wait for the barge at the, the next lock. Uh, it's the top of relaxing product, yes. and, but high scale, I mean, the service is so great on board. Once you try, you stay on board. Ah, it sounds amazing. Now tell us, um, we mentioned earlier on about first time travellers, if they're giving it a taste and a go. Um, what itinerary would you suggest? You know, this is the one for you, this will whet your appetite. For the first timer? Mm -hmm. Everybody may be attracted by their two classical crews, the Rhine and the Danube. These are the, let's say, in a way, the must of the river cruise because, because they're famous for so many years. But I'm, I, I was really keen on the Seine River. Uh, the Seine River, why? Because everybody knows Paris, Deauville, Normandy. You can go from Paris to, to Normandy in two hours by car. We can bring you from Paris to Honfleur in Normandy in seven days. Relaxing days where you, you, you cruise in the meanders of the river, you can see the, from, from the river the castle of Richard the Lion King, uh, you, you, you can uh, discover Rouen by foot and uh, arrive in the little charming port of uh, Honfleur, which is a fishing port and you stay there, it's famous for the, the quality of the light and all the painters who came here, and you just go to the market, etc. The, the contrast with the big city light of Paris and the relaxing cruise bringing you to the coast, Norman coast, is something which has, I really enjoy. And would you suggest time-wise, sort of June, that would be quite nice to do it, May, June? I'm just planning my holidays, really. <laughs> uh, I see. Uh, it, well, of course, it's nice any time. And you know, uh, well, the weather today is uh, not really predictable, but the, the colours change. In spring, you have much green colours and, and, and nice time. The summer is always nice because the, the river is a bit windy. And, uh, and there are all these little gangettes along, around the sand with the music and you, you enjoy the, the time and the autumn is, is also beautiful, so, well, Whenever. come any time. <laughs> Voila, yes, Voila. exactly. Thank you so much for your time. We've had a wonderful chat. It's been very, very interesting. Thank okay, you. now, let me tell you about this. It's our first time guide to cruise holidays and it's absolutely free of charge. Just give us a call 0871 423 Calls will cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and other networks and mobiles may vary. Don't forget you can also ask for a copy through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk where you can also get in touch with your questions for future programmes. That's all we've got time for on today's edition of the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. My huge thanks to Michelle Grimm and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time.